referring to was it something I said. The panel show all about quotations and the quoted people who quotated them. The quotatorizers, as I believe they're technically called. <laughs> or is it quotatinators? <laughs> Whoever they are and whatever the hell they're called, that's who we'll be asking questions about. On Mickey Flanagan's team, an Englishman, an Irishman and a Scotsman are just three ways not to describe Welsh comedian Rod Gilbert. <laughs> and with Richard Iowardi tonight, an Englishman, an Irishman and a Scotsman are equally inappropriate ways of describing comedian Josie Long. <laughs> and here to read our quotations is a broadcaster famous for his dodgy fashion sense on children's TV who once said, Looking back at my choice of shirts and jumpers, I really do cringe. But it was the 70s. Thank heavens it's only the fashion police he has to worry about. Please welcome legendary newsreader John Craven. <laughs> Um, Josie, do you have a favourite quotation? Yeah, I do. And there's this quote by Albert Camus, the miserable French writer, philosopher, pipe smoker, uh, goalkeeper. goalkeeper. That yeah, was the one I was yeah. looking for. <laughs> and then um, he says that, In the depths of winter, I realised that within myself there was an invincible summer. And it's so awesome, but it's also meaningless, because that's not true. <laughs> it was still winter till the middle of June. But it's beautiful, isn't it? How many people here feel they've got an invincible summer lying within them? <laughs> I worry sometimes I've got a drizzly autumn lying. <laughs> but, yeah. I'm just like a Russian doll of winter. <laughs> just open me up and there's more and more ice, coldness and despair. <laughs> so, and then a tiny baby one right in the middle. Yeah, who's furious. <laughs> no one even knows I'm here and it's cold. <laughs> Our opening round is called threesomes. Many good things come in threes. French hens, billy goats gruff, blind mice, all rather nice starters in a Heston Blumenthal restaurant. <laughs> also coming in threes, three famous people who may have said a particular quotation. All our panellists have to do is decide which of the three said it. Now, as a modern, thrusting, go-getting panel show, you can play along at home by following at something I said on Twitter to unlock extra clips. The theme of this week's threesome is childhood. And can we have the first quotation, please, John? My earliest memory is of our nanny trying to drown me in the bus. I promise you, Nursey Rogers was holding me under. In, in a moment, I'll give you three famous faces to choose from. But before that, what, what do you make of the quote? I think this statement sort of rules out most of the working class. Do you? Yeah, because we don't tend no, to have nannies be. that barf us. They tend to go... Ah, cold for bad boy, you go and do it, you know. <laughs> I can't see it being Ray Winston, put it that way. <laughs> Maybe it's an upper class person. The upper class is very weird about this sort of thing. It's nice that uh, whoever it is has uh, still calls them Nursey Rogers with some affection all these years later after the attempted assassination. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. going to narrow down your options okay. now for who said this. Was it Claire Balding off Channel 4 Racing, Nick Hewer off The Apprentice, or Prince Harry off his face? <laughs> if it was Prince Harry, we'd have read about it, wouldn't we, surely? That an assassination attempt on the... If it was the royal family, they would have had her murdered. <laughs> and the end of the quote would be, she's dead now, of course. Special forces. <laughs> <laughs> That's the explanation. What's your next question? My, uh, my grandmother's no longer with us now, of course. Special forces. <laughs> <laughs> How can your first memory be of being drowned? You see, I think it's conceptually quite hard for your first memory to incorporate the idea of death. <laughs> Shit, they're trying to kill me. Oh, I don't know what life is. Am I alive? I'm a baby. I'm so brainy. What's happened? <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a clue. I can tell you that two of our threesome had nannies when they were growing up. Do the um, royal family do any childcare? I think they'd probably, you know, pick it up, give it a bit of a jiggle. You'd have to think of a name. <laughs> think of a name, go on the balcony, jiggle, jiggle, name, name, yeah. hand it back. And then, and then go to its graduation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can I make a guess that Prince Harry didn't have a nanny because Princess Diana took them to Thorpe Park? Oh, that's a good... That's yeah. true. He, I don't think that did. precludes the idea of a nanny, does it? No, yeah, it's... no, it, it's flimsy, but I just thought <laughs> maybe Princess Diana wouldn't let him have him. Because she was a down-to-earth... She's... Earl's daughter. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One of the people, though, wasn't she? Yeah. She, she took him to she... Batlands for a fortnight as well, didn't she? <laughs> <laughs> he always wears the constant expression of a man who's sort of about to go under the water. 
Imagine working with him. How long would it be before you put a bit of shit in his pocket? <laughs> Incidentally, Mickey, how long do you usually <laughs> find it before you... <laughs> Hold up. Yeah. What have we got here? Well, we need an answer. OK. Well, well, it's Nick Hewer. You... Oh, is that what you're choosing you as well? No, you can both choose the same thing. Oh, you think it's out. Nick Hewer? We think Nick Hewer as well. You think Nick Hewer? Well, the answer is... Nick Hewer. Well done. <laughs> Nick went on to say, I told my parents and she didn't last long after that. So even back then he was used to hearing people say, you're fired. <laughs> um, <laughs> John, when, when you were a child, you wanted to be a broadcaster, didn't you? Well, yeah. When I was about ten, I think, I asked for a microphone as a birthday present. And I used to sit in the, in the kitchen with the microphone and the lead went through to the sitting room and I plugged into the wireless. Uh, and my parents had to listen to me reading the Yorkshire Evening News. <laughs> I think that's a very sweet image. I think if, that if more children were sneaking into the next room and pretending to read the news, then I think there'd be, well, mm. I'll say it, less drug abuse. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, I, I used to love the way every, on a, every episode of Newsround, you always started by going, hello again. I did. Which yeah. I, I loved the way you said hello again. I also <laughs> said, and finally, um, and finally, long before Trevor MacDonald did on News at 10. He nicked and finally. <laughs> I think he did. <laughs> yeah. That but man's a fucking hack. I always knew. That. <laughs> so what did you say to the bastard? <laughs> Sir Trevor MacDonald. The bastard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, we never home. actually discussed it, to be honest. Well, you're a gentleman, unlike yeah. that thieving bastard. <laughs> um, okay, John. Can we have the next quotation on childhood, please? Indeed. I can still recall, in slow motion, the way my sausage shot across the table towards the Queen as she sipped her tea. <laughs> so, was it Claire Balding, Nick Hewer or Prince Harry? It's not Prince Harry, because there's no way that Prince Harry would say the Queen, cos he knows her. They call her the Queen, though, in the royal family. Well, I've heard, yeah, I've the heard queen Prince Charles down? refer to his mother, who is the Queen, as the Queen. What, he says... The Queen? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think he says the Queen, <laughs> like, when he's with her, you know, having a cup of tea. I don't say, hello, the Queen, could you pass the show? The queen? It must be Prince Harry, because it has to be breakfast. The only time that one person will be having tea and another one will be having a sausage is breakfast time. And the only one who would be breakfasting with the Queen is Prince Harry. Otherwise, one of the other two has smuggled a sausage in while they've been invited for tea. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, 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 we're going to go for Claire Balding, actually, I think, because she seems the sort of person who would be invited to evening tea, and I think the Queen makes it up as she goes along. If she wants sausages, she's having sausages. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's going to be Prince Harry. He's the only one who breakfasts with the Queen. Otherwise, you're suggesting, what occasion would the Queen be sipping tea and she's got a sausage out? Bonfire night. They Bonfire could, night. Like, yeah. They could be sort of... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Jack and potatoes. Yeah. She's got Soup a flask tea. of tea. Yeah. And she might, might have hosted a celebrity bonfire night. <laughs> oh, the Queen's invited to celebrity bonfire night. Thank you. Yes. She's on Big Brother next time. Is that a problem? D five and the Queen is. <laughs> <laughs> the Queen is crying in the dairy room. <laughs> I don't know why I came in here. <laughs> Things are going so well. <laughs> so. Whose sausage shot across the table towards the Queen? Was it Claire Balding, Nick Hewer, or Prince Harry? Claire Balding. Richard and Josie? Claire Balding. Claire Balding. Everyone thinks it's Claire Balding. The answer is Claire Balding. Everyone's right. <laughs> so, John, can, can we have Claire's quotation in full, please? Indeed. The trouble with cutting a sausage long ways is that if you press too hard, it's a bit like squeezing a bar of soap. The sausage can shoot out of your grasp. I know this. I know this all too well. I can still recall in slow motion the way my sausage shot across the table towards the Queen as she sipped her tea. The incident took place in Claire's family dining room when she was 12. Her father used to train racehorses for mm -hmm. the Queen. Now, how did a 14-year-old Harry try to make his father's 50th birthday party less boring? He pretended the Queen had just been assassinated and went, You're king! Yeah. And, then, <laughs> <laughs> and then he went, No. 
glad you're still alive. <laughs> and, oh. Come on do, you think, now. do you think it wouldn't be more complex than that on Prince, Prince Charles? If he was told the Queen is there, wouldn't be a sort of grief mixed with excitement at the rock. It would just be hooray! <laughs> I think the grief would come after. <laughs> It's not true, it's that, not, no. no. He stripped naked and ran around in front of the guests. <laughs> <laughs> One party-goer recalled, Charles turned crimson. Ooh. I think crimson was a gay friend of his. <laughs> <laughs> so, at the end of our threesomes round, I can tell you that the teams are tied. Our next round is called Keywords. The teams must guess a full quote from hearing just two words from it. So much like having a chat in a nightclub, except without the blaring so-called music that people feel they have to pretend they like. <laughs> OK, here's a famous quotation from Muhammad Ali, said at a press conference in 1964 before his fight with Sonny Liston. And I'm looking for the entire quote. As your first clue, John, can we have two keywords, please? Sting and eyes. Is it like an extra bit of that quote everybody knows, float like a sting like a bee? Is it just a, another bit of that? There's more to it than floats like a butterfly, sting like a bee, and it includes the word eyes. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, look around like eyes? <laughs> <laughs> I will detach his retina from his eyes. That's, that could happen as well. Yeah, you know? yeah, again, yeah I mean, I'm going to give you another word, another clue word, please, Ugh, Josh. I hope it's not retina, because yeah. I guess that. <laughs> <laughs> Hands. 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 It's a rhyming couplet. It's a rhyming couplet? Butterfly. Sing a butterfly, float like a bee. Punch. Hang on, I'm playing charades with John Craven. This is exciting. <laughs> punch, punch. Hit. 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 Sing Death like a butterfly, words. float like a bee. Hit like eyes uh, with my hands. Hi, as hands. C. His hands. Hands. C. C. Hit, hit, hit. Hit. Horizon. What right. his right. eyes can't see. Can't see. His hands can't hit what his eyes can't see. Yes. This has <laughs> turned in to give us a clue. <laughs> You're right. right. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Can we have the full quotation, please? Indeed. John? Floats like a butterfly, sting like a bee. His hands can't hit what his eyes can't see. Well done. Um, now. Um, Muhammad Ali, or Cassius Clay, as he was then, said uh, this quotation in 1964 before his fight with Sonny Liston. He also said, Sonny Liston is nothing. The man can't talk. The man can't fight. The man needs talking lessons. The man needs boxing lessons. And since he's going to fight me, he needs falling lessons. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> um, in 1960, he won the light heavyweight gold medal in the Olympics in Rome. Any idea what was unusual about his flight to Rome? It was delayed. <laughs> <laughs> he flew the plane. <sighs> no. Oh. There were no peanuts. <laughs> I don't know whether there were any peanuts. He was the only one on it. No. He wasn't on it. <laughs> no, he was on it. These are all good answers, though. <laughs> the answer is he wore a parachute. He was afraid of flying, and he bought one from an army surplus store. It displays a singular lack of concern for everyone else on that plane. <laughs> if you have got a parachute on, with the intention that you will jump clear of everyone else who's going down. Can you open the door, please? I know that will preemptively suck a lot of the passengers out. <laughs> I'm going to jump out. And you fucks, best of luck. <laughs> I'm Cassius Clay. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're absolutely right. It was, um... What a <laughs> terrible, terrible man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm ashamed to have mentioned him. <laughs> Muhammad Ali once went to Iraq and successfully negotiated the release of 14 US hostages from Saddam Hussein, a strategy which didn't go quite so well when Tony Blair sent Frank Bruno to look for weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> and at the end of our keywords round, a quick look at the scores tells me that Richard's team is in the lead. <laughs> Over the break... See if you can complete this quotation from American rapper and businessman 50 Cent. I can't believe my grandmother's making me take out the garbage. I'm what? Tweet your answer to at something I said. See you in a couple of minutes. <laughs> Welcome back to Was It Something I Said. Before the break, we asked you to complete this quotation from 50 Cent. I can't believe my grandmother's making me take out the garbage. I'm what? 
Any thoughts, panel? I actually do know this. You know it? Because I saw it retweeted, yes. Huh? It's, um, he says, I can't believe my grandmother's making me take out the garbage. I'm rich. I don't have to put up with this shit. I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's just round at his grandmother's. Yeah. Yeah. She's obviously can't yeah. move. <laughs> it's like, please, darling, will you take the rubbish out? And he's like, oh, forget this. I'm going home. <laughs> but the key word here is making. How violent is the <laughs> grandmother <being? laughs> <laughs> we haven't met his grandmother. It could be a, yeah. a chokehold she's using. Yeah. We don't know what's going on. Let's hear the full quotation. I can't believe my grandmother's making me take out the garbage. I'm rich. I'm going home. I don't need this S dot dot dot. <laughs> well, um, John, I noticed that you didn't say the word uh, shit. Is that, is that a, a point of principle? I just choose not to swear on television, that's all. I remember you dropping the C-bomb on Newsround. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I was going to say that John says country file every week. <laughs> <laughs> that seems quite a rare real fine way of putting it. <laughs> but, yes, he was raised by his grandmother. What's he not allowed to do around her, 50 cent? Rap. <laughs> <laughs> well, it might, it might restrict his rapping, this rule. Oh, can he not swear? Like John Craven? Yeah, swear. exactly. He can't swear. Like John, like, John, <laughs> John, John Craven chooses not to swear. 50 Cent is prevented from swearing by it's... his all-powerful grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's just the tone or the way she said it. I don't know. I don't know, Fiddy. But, yeah. <laughs> it's not one to kind of do that unless provoked. I think she must have used a very haughty tone. <laughs> now, the next round is called What Are They Talking About? You're going to hear a quote that's been taken out of context and you've got to work out what that person is talking about. It's sort of like trying to start watching Game of Thrones from the middle of an episode in season three. Except there will be no nudity. At least, <laughs> no nudity above the desk line. <laughs> Here's a quotation from artist Andy Warhol's diary in 1985. Can we hear it, please, John? I don't know what held me back from pushing her over the balcony. I guess I called her a bitch or something and asked how she could do it. So you're comfortable with the word bitch? <laughs> <laughs> I did consider that very deeply, uh, yeah. Richard. But, but a bitch is the definition of a female of the species, isn't it? Yeah. I don't feel like a bitch, you know, so I don't count that as real swearing. Okay. <laughs> It'd probably have to be someone quite famous, cos he was generally obsessed with. Famous people. Madonna? It, no, it wasn't Madonna. Grace Jones? No. Shall I keep naming 80s pop stars? I would love you to. Tapao, <laughs> Bross, Berlin, MC Hammer. He's not talking about anyone famous. OK. <laughs> well, it was his wife or his girlfriend or some, a lover, no. a lover of some kind. No, I'll give you a clue. It happened at a book signing. Is it a fan? A fan uh, of his, with a book of his? A book signing. To it's, sign, yeah. Whether or not she was a fan is put in doubt by her subsequent actions. Did she throw paint all over him? No. Oh. Did she say, sort out your barnet? <laughs> You're warm. Something about, do you wear a wig? You're getting warmer. She tried to pull his ear off. You got it. <laughs> oh. She snatched the wig off his head at the Rizzoli bookshop in Soho, where he was signing copies of his new book, America. Uh, Warhol described the event saying, my biggest nightmare came true. Keep your hair on. <laughs> <laughs> so, at the end of the What Are They Talking About round, Richard's team is in the lead. <laughs> Our next round is the Was It Something I Said round, in which each team has to work out who said the following quotations. It'll either be from one of our guests on the show tonight or from our virtual guest, Lance Armstrong. So be warned, a quote of yours could be judged the kind of thing that could only be said by one of the biggest lying cheats of all time. <laughs> so first up is Mickey's team. Who said the following? Was it Richard, Josie, John, me or Lance Armstrong? A boo is a lot louder than a cheer. If you have ten people cheering and one person booing, all you hear is the booing. Mm. That's the sort of thing a stand-up would say, isn't it? Lance Armstrong, though. He's got a tight set. <laughs> tight set. stuff about cycling, though. <laughs> Bit of a one-note stand-up, Lance. I, I was in the saddle, and uh, funny story. 
<laughs> anyway, I was re-injecting my own blood. <laughs> and, uh... Lance Armstrong, he'd have had people booing definitely. Richard, is that recorded in front of a live... The IT crowd was, wasn't it? It was. Yes, yeah, yeah. so you'll have had booed, yeah. David? Uh, why would they boo him on the IT crowd? <laughs> They saw me out. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's see if he recalls this. Boo! Oh! <laughs> Stop it, that's so much like louder it. than ten people cheering. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't see anyone booing John, you know. On country well, far, I don't think as you go, and over here we have a cow, and everyone goes, boo! <laughs> boo! Boo! <laughs> right, I need an answer. We're going to go for Richard. Well, the answer is... Lance Armstrong. Yeah. <laughs> so next up, it's Richard's team. Who said the following? Was it Mickey, Rod, John, me, or Lance Armstrong? I've got 4,000 or 5,000 songs on my iPod. That's just showing off, really. <laughs> well, that can't be you. No. Because you <laughs> have, like, have... Brahms and then podcasts about the Second World War. <laughs> <laughs> Underscored with, <laughs> with, with, with to pow. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is. Do you know what I think? You think it's crazy? I think, it, yeah. Does it help that I haven't got an iPod? Oh, you're out of the game. <laughs> you know what, John? That helps a great deal. Good. <laughs> it helps so much that we can now eliminate it. <laughs> <laughs> I think okay, what's it could your be answer? Mickey because, like, I can I've imagine got... him sort of saying, as like a fun dad, like, I've got 4,000 or 5,000 songs <laughs> on my iPod. Yeah, I've got... For... <laughs> <'Cause>... <laughs> I've got 4,000 or 5,000. How many Charles and Dave songs are there? <laughs> <laughs> it's more than one and fewer than 4,000. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to make you plump for, sure. for one. They've been going a long time. They've plump. Been... Okay. I B think... Bit harsh, bit harsh. Yeah. <laughs> wasn't a bit... It wasn't a... <laughs> it wasn't a abuse. You're very slender. I was using... I was using the imperative verb, meaning to choose. I Decide. OK. I think it could be Lance. Yeah, I do too, I really do. Um, your answer is Lance Armstrong. Mm -hmm. I, your answer is correct. Well, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for. And a quick look at the scores tells me this week's winners are Richard and Josie. <laughs> Thank you to Mickey and Rod and to Richard and Josie and to our guest narrator, John Craven. And we leave you with this quotation from American novelist James A. Baldwin. When one begins to live by habit and by quotation, one has begun to stop living. Oh, thanks a lot, James. Don't I feel a dick? <laughs> Good night. Till Death Do Us Part is not quite working for Vod. Too bad she can't just dump him in a shopping mall and run, eh? Brand new Fresh Meat is on tomorrow from 10 on 4. Up next, having your family members in the same room as you when you're getting it on is... Well, it's just not normal, is it? Even if they can't see or hear. Toast of London. <laughs> <laughs>